Hello everybody, my name is Abu Nice Beer from Barry Science Lab, and today we're going to be looking at rational expressions. So, so there might be a rational expression. So, what is the difference between rational expressions and fractions? I mean, they sound the same, right? Well, first of all, let's review what a fraction is before we get into rational expressions. So, let's say that we see it in, for example, uh, this is too small of a shading in thingy. So, let's say that we see it in, not one-fifth, but two-fifths of this circle. Let's assume I split it into perfect fifths here. So, 1 over 5, 1 over 5, 1 over 5, 1 over 5, 1 over 5. Why does it say 1 over 5 everywhere? Well, that's because, I mean, there are five equal parts in the circle, and each one is one of them. So, so do we have 1 over 5 and 1 over 5 both shaded in blue, then together makes 2 over 5. And keep in mind, the numerator is the number on top, the denominator is the number on the bottom. Now, this is just to refresh you. You probably already learned this deal. So, like, for example, this, you know, is going to be 3 tenths. Some fractions you can even simplify. So, for example, if we take up, oh no, I need to undo that stroke and that stroke too. So, dude, so if we take four out of these six slices, what do you think will happen? Well, I mean, let's just see it in and see. And now that we have four of six slices, we have four six. So, four over six, four six. But you do realize that this is also equal to two over three. And <coughs> how? Well, this is 2 times 2, this is 2 times 3, and uh, once we cancel out these 2's, it just becomes 2 over 3. We'll use a similar method to simplify rational expressions, but first we need to know what they really are. So what are rational expressions? Rational expressions are blank, but they have blank. So let's fill in the words. So our word bank says only two words. Variables and fractions. So, tell me when you're done with this. And then, we'll start. Alright, five, four, pause the video for more time. Two, and one. Alright, so this should be fairly easy because there's only two letters, uh, two words. So, rational expressions are just fractions. But they have variables. So keep that in mind. Rational expressions are fractions with variables on them. So how do you simplify a rational expression? Well, let's say that we have x squared plus 6x minus 7 over x plus 7. Now, if you look pretty closely at this, you'll notice something. So what is that something? Well, we have x squared plus 6x plus 7, don't we? Now, uh, no, not plus 7, minus. Now, let's put the regular formula for a quadratic next to that boy. Hmm, looks very similar, doesn't it? So, that means that this must be a quadratic. One that we can even solve by doing simple factoring. So if we just factor like this, well, let's actually make this something 
different. So let's say that we have x squared plus 6x minus 7. Then we just need to find two numbers that uh, add up to 6 and multiply to negative 7, which would be, well, 7, negative 7. There's two ways to get to it. Negative 1 times 7 and negative 7 times 1. And there's, I'm not going to treat you like baby. There's only one way to get 6, and we all know what it is. So x squared plus 6x, which would become plus 7x minus x minus 7, 2x plus 14. Now, for the 2x plus 14 part, notice that <coughs> there is a GCF, a greatest common factor that we need to factor out. It's 2 in this case. So we're going to factor out 2. So if we divide every term by 2, get x and 7. We need to use this, great in co uh, this greatest common factor here as well. The greatest common factor was here as well. 4 and 6 had the greatest common factor of 2 in them. So, that's wonderfully amazing, isn't it? So, let's keep that as a note. DCFs are important when simplifying fractions. So now, we do the same GCF thing over here. We get, we just taught you this in the previous lesson, so I'm disappointed in you if you do not remember this. So now factor out x plus 7 from everything, divided by x plus 7, and you have 2, and these cancel out, which gives you x minus 1 over 2, which is our answer. Let's highlight it. So how do you find, how do you simplify the, a rational expression. Here's our word bank with sad face for, for some reason. GCF, numerator and denominator. So I'll give you five seconds, five, four, pause the video for more time, two and one. All right, so here's the answer. First of all, we just said that GCFs are important when simplifying fractions, so of course, we have to say, find a GCF. A GCF between what? Well, you could have said denominator and numerator, or numerator and denominator. That doesn't really matter which. But I'm going to pick numerator and denominator. All right. So now, what happens when we graph a rational expression? Well, to explore that, we first need to know what an asymptote is. So what is an asymptote? Imagine reaching for a fire. So if you're reaching for it, then you're kind of like reaching for it, but you don't want to touch it. So like you come closer to it and closer and closer and closer, but you never dare and touch it and burn yourself. Oh no, just like the camera might come closer and closer and closer and closer to me, but it'll hopefully never touch me, or the floor for that matter. So, that means that an asymptote is like trying to get near a number, just like we get near a fire, but don't touch it. So, or the camera is trying to get near me but not touch me. Jeez, cameraman, what is up with you today? So anyway, that is what we know about asymptotes so far. So fill this out with the word blank. So blank tends to a blank on the blank blank, but never blank it. All right. So, this sentence doesn't make much sense without your input. So, what do you think? What do you think this could be? 
give you five seconds. Five, four, three, pause the video for more time, and one. So, the first one you should have gotten right away, x-axis is the only one with the hyphen in it. So obviously this is gonna be the x-axis. And, but never reaches it. So, asymptotes are when a function tends to a value on the x-axis, but never reaches it. All right. So, what about here? How do you find an asymptote? Well, for example, we have one over x minus three and x plus one. So what we need to do is look at the denominator. Or just look at dd, lad. So, what is one? So, how do we find the asymptote of this? Well, we can do that pretty easily. Look at the denominator once again. So, if we have x minus 3 and x plus 1, what do you think will happen if we plug in 3 to this equation? Well, if we plug in 3 or plug in the, the 1, then we have 1 over 3 minus 3 times 3 plus 1, so 1 over 0, which is indeterminate. So, if you plug in 3, then you just can't do that. What about if you plug in negative 1? Well, you get negative 1 minus 3, then negative 1 plus 1. So you get negative 4 times 0. So you once again some get something indeterminate. Hmm. So what happens if we plug in 2.99999? Well, we get something that's extremely close to infinity, but not exactly. So, we have to take these binomials that are at the bottom and set them to zero in order to find the asymptotes. All right, so let's review what we did. To find an asymptote, look at the blank of a blank blank set it to blank, find blank, and that's where the asymptote will be. The treasure map isn't quite filled out here, so could you help us on the journey? Five, four, you know the drill, pause the video, one. All right, so first of all, look at the denominator. We just said, lad, look at the denominator. Look at dd. Second, of a blank blank. Well, rational expression. First of all, it's the only one with two words in it. Second of all, uh, it makes sense in the context of a rational expression. Why am I not using red for this? Why is it be consistent? So. Sorry. All right, so this is the denominator of a rational expression. So we have to set it to what? Zero. Find x, and that's where the asymptote will be. All right, so now we're gonna cut it off here. Well, actually, we can do this. So how do you graph an asymptote? So an asymptote on a function, so an asymptote kind of looks like a slide at a playground. So 
for example, f of x equals 1 over x looks somewhat like this. It has horizontal, it has a little horizontal asymptotes over here, as well as vertical asymptotes over here. So they tend towards zero on the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So an asymptote on a function looks like a slide. So, oh wait, I can't tell you that yet. All right, five, four, you know the drill. Pause the video, one, blip. Okay. Looks like a slide. One, blank or blank, which could be x or y or y or x. I'm gonna choose x or y. Gets closer to the asymptote. Uh, then just pick the other, y or x. Values go very high or low. All right, now time for the review. All right, so you get 10 seconds to do this one. 10, 9, you know the drill. You're not actually going to do this in 10 seconds. Uh, just pause the video. It's hopeless. You already have four seconds. Actually, three now. Now two. Now one, that's your last second. Let's do this. So, rational expressions are, let's see, they are fractions. Oh, looks like it's not over here. So they are fractions. But they have Variables. Variables. To simplify rational expressions, find the GCF. Between the blank and the blank? Well, that would be between the numerator, uh, numerator and the denominator. The numerator and the denominator. Asymptotes are when a blank, which would be function, tends to a value on the x-axis. But never reaches it. To find an asymptote, look at the denominator of a rational expression. Set it to zero. Okay, find blank, which would be Find x, and that's where the asymptote will be. An asymptote on a function looks like a slide. Not sure what that is doing here. So, when blank or blank, so x or y, y or x, x or y gets closer to the Asymptote, x or y, oh wait, y or x go very high or low. I guess I meant to write fractions here instead of functions. Anyway, finally, finally, we're done with this monster for lesson. So, thank you everybody. That's Rational Expressions, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.